Welcome everybody, Doug Scockle here with Johnson County Community College in Overland Park, Kansas. Today we're going to take a look at how to increase your shooting range and as a result we think you're going to make more three-pointers. Now I'm not limiting this to just perimeter players. Over the years as a college coach we had several uh, post players that came to us that had never shot three-pointers uh, when they were in high school and we worked on increasing their shooting range and made those kids into real effective uh, three-point shooters. In fact, we have a sequence uh, in today's video where I have uh, a, a player that uh, has the last two years has been in a post situation and uh, we've actually for the last three, four weeks been working on increasing that shooting range and with really good results. Now, when I observe high school and college players shooting a basketball, I see two things, okay? They're, and and, and it, uh, it's because they're not using their body correctly. Number one, I see uh, what I call power leaks. In other words, they're doing something that is uh, uh, allowing the, their power to dissipate instead of using that power to their advantage. The second thing is that I see that they're missing out on some opportunities to use what I call power boosts, an opportunity to boost the energy and to make that shot uh, much more effortless and uh, much more accurate as a result. Now we're going to throw in some science, we're going to talk about some levers and inertia and momentum and the centrifugal pump effect uh, today and in a moment we're going to go to the Johnson County uh, Community College gym uh, but when we do that we're, we're going to take a look at right away in our first sequence we're going to take a look at uh, uh, not a high school or college player but we're going to look at a four foot seven inch seventy pound fourth grade boy and we're going to watch him attempt uh, six three-pointers from the college three-point line. And we'll refer back to that six-shot uh, six sequence from time to time. So right now, uh, it's time for us to go to the gym. Actually, before we head to the gym, there's a couple of things that I want to take care of here. Number one is I want to make sure that you have my contact information. Uh, you can see my email address up there, dougscockle at AOL.com, my phone number, you can call me in, in mornings or evenings and be glad to visit with you. And the other part here, you can see where uh, I put, uh, you know, where you can do a search, Doug Scockle YouTube. Uh, if you do that, uh, then when you see our videos, I've made lots of annotations on our videos, all of our videos. But what I've found is that there are some other sources that have picked up our videos, and so you're really not getting it directly off of YouTube. And as a result, when you view that, or sometimes it's on some of the small devices like your phone, the annotations don't show up. And there's a lot of information in those annotations. So, again, if you would do a search, Doug Scockle YouTube, and then you can click on the video that you want to watch, and you'll see the annotations that go along with that. Now let's go to the gym. So let's take a look at how our young demonstrator is able to, I mean, again, four foot seven inches tall, 70 pounds, and yet uh, shoots a, a real smooth uh, three-point shot. And we're going to take a look at uh, where he picks up power boosts to enable him to uh, be able to shoot, and as you saw, shoot successfully uh, from that distance. The first one deals with his footwork. Okay, He is moving into a shot, so he has momentum going right away, uh, inertia, is, is working in his favor, a body, excuse me, a body in motion tends to remain emotionless, act upon but outside force. So we want to get that forward momentum, get that inertia going, and keep it going. We don't want to catch the ball and pause. We want to be able to move right into the shot. And so to accomplish this, what you see this young man doing is that as the ball it, it arrives, his left foot gets down either just slightly before or right as the ball hits his hands. Now I see a lot of people who try to do this footwork and incorrectly they'll catch the ball and then they'll step left right. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's a traveling violation and so I want to make sure we get this timing down right. So again, ball's in the air as it hits my hand, left foot forward, then I step with my right and I continue the motion. All right, now the other thing that he does as far as continuing that motion is he has what I call forward drift. 
Uh, again, a three-point shot to, to count as a three-pointer, your feet must be behind the line as you begin the launch of your shot. Well, as you're going to see with this young man, uh, he, has, he has a pretty good forward drift, and you want to get some forward drift into yours as well. You don't want to go straight up and down. Yeah, that, that really is a force that's working against you. You want everything, all that momentum and inertia working for you to go you know, in, in that direction right there. Now, the other thing that he does is that he dips his body and the basketball, all right? So he gets this ball, and there's a folding of the body. And I'll talk about how to use uh, levers here in just a little bit. Uh, to gain an advantage in shooting the ball, and he does that really well. So there's a, there's a, he dips the ball and he dips his body. And from the three-point range, you do want to dip the ball. Now, if you're shooting a ten-footer, probably uh, you, not only do you not want to dip the ball, but you, uh, you don't need to dip the ball to gain this. And so this, this dipping or this down and up motion creates an effect. There's an actual, it's a thing in physics called the centrifugal um, pump effect. And in the centrifugal pump effect, what happens is there's a, there's a power boost. Let me give you an, an, an illustration here if I can. I've got a golf club right here, so this down and up movement. Now golfers, when, when, when they, when they uh, are, are going to hit the ball, there's a, there's a downward motion. There's a little a downward motion with their body, and then as they come in, they, you know, there's a raise up. So it's a down and up motion. And it kind of, to give you an idea of the power that you get here, I'm not going to use my arms. I'm just going to use that down and up motion. But I go here and by down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up, I create a, a real power boost. And uh, you can use the same thing when you get that basketball. Is I do want to, I want to down and up. Okay. I don't want to just be down. Okay. Because now here's where inertia comes into play if I'm just down and catch the ball now I have to overcome inertia the other part of it is is the body at rest tends to remain at rest so it's like coming like a, a car coming away from a stop sign you don't go from zero to 40 miles an hour you know boom just like that it takes time so if I lock out like this okay I have to overcome inertia so instead if I get this and I, I get this down and up motion Okay, so I'm, I'm in motion, but the bonus is this centrifugal pump effect. You know, you do the same thing in a playground swing. You swing back and forth, and there's a certain point in where you pull on the change, on the change of the, of, of the swing, and it gives you a slingshot effect. Well, it's the same thing here. You get a little slingshot effect, and we call it the centrifugal pump effect. You know, I want to quickly show you uh, something else that I see from time to time when I'm doing a video analysis of a player's shots. I see this a lot in girls, and I don't know why, but I, I, don't, I don't see it in guys, but I see it in girls. And I call it the separation effect. You know, what we'd like to do is get everything working, all the levers, everything working together. So when my body goes down, the ball goes down, and then body comes up, ball goes up. But here's what I see occasionally with girls, is they'll start with the ball high, and they will dip their lower body while raising the ball. So I call it a separation because the body goes down as the ball goes up. And I'm not sure, I don't know why that is, but uh, there's a real serious uh, uh, loss of power in that particular move. Well, another way that's power into his shot is that he, he's learned to use the power levers in his body uh, in an efficient and correct manner. And you have primary uh, levers that are going to produce uh, more power and you want them to, to produce more power, you've got secondary levers. And again, these are going to, things are going to apply to uh, basically the three-point shot. So the primary levers in your body, the primary power producers, are these three right here. Okay, you've got the, the trunk, the upper leg, and the lower leg. Trunk in blue, the upper leg in white, and the lower leg represented with the yellow right there. Those are your primary uh, uh, sources of power and then secondary secondary ones are going to be I've got the upper and lower arm right here and if I could take it one step further because there is another secondary and that would be the hand or the palm right there so these are secondary uh, levers in terms of providing power so what we're looking for in this situation is a ratio of uh, 80 to 20. I want 80 percent of my power to come from the primary power sources. I really only want 20 percent, no more than that, from the secondary, meaning the upper or lower arm and, and hand and the fingers. 
the, those should only provide 20% of the power. If you get beyond that, th those are your fine tuners. They do provide some power, but they're, they're fine tuners and they are responsible for timing, touch, rhythm, and feel. And what happens is, is that when you incorrectly use the uh, primary uh, levers that should be providing 80% of your strength and shift power into the upper arm, lower arm, and into the hands, the timing, touch, rhythm, and feel goes out the door because now strength becomes the number one requirement, and uh, you're not going to you're just not going to make very many shots. You're gonna, not going to have a very good shot if you uh, allow that to happen. I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a shot without the uh, use and availability of my uh, primary uh, power sources. So she's going to brace her feet behind my heels and hold my knees. Let's take a look at what this looks like because when I use when I do this correctly without her, if I shoot correctly and I have use my power levers correctly, uh, the shot should look effortless. Should look really smooth. Let's see what this looks like. All right, so not very good, and that's what I was trying to illustrate right there. That again, once you shift power from the primary power sources to the secondary power sources, you have a real forced, a real strained looking uh, shot because the upper body now has to provide uh, the strength that the, it, that the, it, you know, that the lower body at this point in that drill anyway uh, can't provide. So there's a way to really maximize the use of these power levers. Uh, and, and, and it's uh, a thing that I call complementary levers. I, I'll give you this example. In the upper arm, in the upper arm and the lower arm, the forearm, I've got these two levers right here. This one provides lift in the shot, that one provides thrust in the shot, and you want them in equal measures. Well, here's the deal. As these two levers straighten in the shot, as they straighten at exactly the same time, down here, I want these two levers to straighten as well. I want the upper leg and the lower leg, they are the complementary levers, and I want them to be synchronized. When these two straighten, these two straighten. Now, the next part of it goes is that I'm going to begin to push the ball with my palm, and as I begin to push that ball with my palm, I begin to push on the floor with the bottom of my feet. So palm and feet, are also complementary levers and then we get into the fingers and as the fingers push the ball the toes are pushing on the floor finally as the ball leaves the fingers the toes leave the ground again in sequence and at that you know with that kind of timing all right so right at the end of straightening the, all those levers in other words when this upper uh, excuse me, the upper and lower arms straighten into a straight line and the, and the upper and lower legs are doing the same thing. There's one final power boost and that's the snap of the wrist so that as these two levers lock into place, there's a forward snap. Okay, and it's kind of like, you see this brace on this ladder, it's moved into position, it's ready for the final part to snap into position. So it's the same thing here, snap, snap. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I have a sophomore, uh, uh, member of our uh, Johnson County Community College basketball team this past year. Uh, she has an opportunity to go on and play at a four-year school next year. Now, she's had a unique situation here in that she's had to play a lot of inside for us at, at Johnson County, County Community College, and next year she's going to go play on the perimeter. Now, she, I don't want to uh, say that we're going to convert her to a perimeter player, but probably we're going to talk about reverting to a perimeter player because she did play on the perimeter in high school but in uh, at Johnson County Community College she was kind of uh, her role was to shoot from 15 feet and in in fact he only attempted five three-pointers in 68 games in two years that she was here so we started a project about three four weeks ago I guess it was in which we're uh, you know helping her to increase her shooting range we're not as I told her we're not changing her shot I'm going to teach her a new shot She's actually going to keep her old shot, which is a two-piece shot. You'll see in a moment she's going to shoot some of those for you. You'll see a, a, a distinct, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a motion, there's a pause, and there's a continuation of the shot. All right? So we'll, I'll have her uh, demonstrate that here in just a second. But we are switching her, not switching her, we are teaching her a one-piece shot where there is no pause, 
so that she can uh, make full utilization of inertia and, and uh, momentum and the centrifugal pump that we talked about earlier uh, to be able to accurately and, and with ease shoot uh, from the three-point line. So right now I'm going to have me go ahead and shoot some two. Her, her uh, uh, shot from close in, she's going to keep this shot, so go ahead and do the hang time kind of here. And so again, watch, you'll see she jumps, hangs, and then shoots. So that's a two-piece shot. There are two distinct motions here, jumping up, then the pause, and then the shot. So watch again, it's a jump, pause, and shot. All right, so here with the two-piece shot, she's going to jump, hang, and you can see it looks like a pretty screen already. So you can jump, hang. It's really difficult for her to get the ball up there right now. Here we go again. Jump, hang. So that's what that's what we're talking about right there. Is this when you hang, yeah, again, you can do that. You can do that in close. In fact, it actually the hanging part is good uh, in close because you kind of need to take something off your power inside. You shoot the ball clear over the basket. So when you're 10 feet, 11 feet, 12 feet, whatever it is, and you jump, pause, your arm, your arms and hands and fingers have very adequate strength from that close range and they can still do their fine-tuning thing. But when you get out to the three-point line and you have a two-piece uh, two shot, it's a different story. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute. I see some guys in the NBA that jump, hang, and shoot. And the thing that I think we don't realize is that a lot of these NBA guys are just literally freaks of nature. And they have this incredible strength. They've got uh, just the ability to, you know, from a long range, they can do that. But for the average basketball player, that's not how you're going to do it. You can't do it. You've got to follow the laws of, of nature and physics and so on and put all those things to your advantage or you're not going to be able to shoot from long range. All right, so in a minute I'm going to have Key go to her new shot, the, the one-piece shot. And I want to tell you what we did. What we basically did is we changed her timing. A lot of players will uh, move the ball into position. I call this a reverse shooter C. Okay, if you have an imagination, you see a backwards letter C right there. A lot of players are, are moving the ball into this position, and now they're ready to begin the launch phase of shooting the basketball. All right, but there's some lost momentum here, and, and we talked about earlier about being able to dip the ball and, and creating that uh, centrifugal uh, pump effect and so on and so forth. And so all I really did, I changed one thing, it was in the timing, and that is this, is that instead of getting to here and beginning the shooting motion, in other words, the other part is just moving into position, now we actually go to the shooting or launch uh, portion of the shot. What I had to do is I told her this, I said, I want, we're going to start shooting the ball sooner. We're going to start the shooting motion sooner. So it's going to start, she's going to raise that ball and about the time it gets about in line or about the height of her armpit, she is going to begin the shooting motion. Now she will pass through, the, she'll pass through this position, but she is beginning the launch from down here, not from here. And that little bit, and the other thing is, there's no pause. It is one continuous motion. There's no pause in her action. So let's take a look at what the new shot looks like right now with a one-piece three-point shot. One other thing that I should mention that we uh, added to the shot was to make sure that she had a forward drift. Again, as we mentioned before, it's a three-pointer if your feet are behind the line when you begin to initiate the shooting action, feet are behind the line, ball goes in, that's a three-pointer even though you may drift forward. So in addition to her one-piece shot and starting to shoot the ball a little bit earlier, you're going to see that she has a little bit of forward drift and that's a, a powerful thing to uh, uh, allow you to shoot the ball uh, much more smoothly. So we're looking for the forward drift, the one piece shot right now, and that's what we're getting right there. What I want you to, what I really want you to focus on is how smoothly uh, her upper body looks when she shoots this ball, that forward drift, a nice one piece shot. Tell it's a shot that looks a whole lot different than that two-piece shot that she had while ago. Okay, all right, let's just stop right there. Ah, yes.
question that comes up from time to time is if I'm going to make some changes in my player shot, when should I do that? What time, you know, what part of the year should I do that? And anytime you're going to make any type of changes in a player's shot, unless it's something minor, I would encourage you to do it in the off season so they've got plenty of time to get this new movement, this new, these new positions uh, uh, thoroughly ingrained before you're going to come into your high school or college basketball season or your uh, youth basketball season. But having said that, if you've got a player that just is not getting good results, then I, I and I've done this uh, on more than one occasion where I've worked with a kid in season because basically what we've said to ourselves is it really can't get any worse. And uh, because initially you're going to have a kid that's going to be thinking, and uh, when you don't want to be a basketball thinker, you want to be a basketball player. So I hope you picked up some ideas and tips here today that can uh, help you or your players uh, increase their shooting range if they've already had three-point shooting range. Maybe you picked up uh, some ideas that will allow them to get a little more power. Uh, maybe they had some power leaks or they picked up a power boost uh, from some of these ideas here. And it allows them to shoot the ball more smoothly that they get a good ratio of only 20% uh, strength coming from the upper body and 80% 80, 80 from the lower body. So again, I hope that uh, uh, you've got some things that are going to really be able to be helpful to you. And uh, best wishes to you and look forward to you in the next video.